Don't property abutting the lake. This edition of the Ridley Report. Hey, are you on the board of selectmen? I've got a question for you. What's, yes, I'm not any what's, the, you what's this business about people being banned from swimming in the lake if they don't own property abutting the lake? Okay. Hi, right, man. Are you on the board of selectmen? I am not. I'm on the Conval School Board. Oh, okay. Never mind then. Don't have any questions for the Conval School Board off the top of my head. I'm so glad. <laughs> You're on the uh, uh, Board of Aldermen, are you? Our Board of, board of Selectmen. We just talked, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, the town clerk. Yeah, okay, sorry. I don't have any Thank questions you. for you. I'm just trying to question. Hey. How are you? Are you on the Board of Selectmen? No, I am not. I'm the road agent. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't have any questions for you then. Thanks, though. They. So it turns out that apparently one of these Selectmen, a former Keen police officer, is Sturdy Thomas, the guy who's been tormenting the free keeners kind of unsuccessfully. And maybe that's why he was kind of a jerk to me when I asked him a policy question. One of the disadvantages of trying to do ambush interviews here is that uh, there are only three selectmen, so there's only so many, there are only so many people for me to talk to. I also have another Ridley Rampage planned at uh, a different bureaucrat meeting where I'm going to do some ambush interviews and uh, it comes up fairly soon so I'll have to leave long before this meeting is over. Won't be able to catch anyone on the way out. Initially I was standing over there in front of the police department because that's like the only place I can see the front and back entrances of this uh, town hall. I, I thought maybe some of the selectmen might go in the front entrance and I wanted to monitor both entrances. So I'm sort of standing out there in all my, you know, my uh, uh, second-rate Ridley regalia. <laughs> uh, so I probably looked kind of unusual, but they never came out and questioned me. One officer did come out and just went to his car and kind of just said hi to me. So while waiting for select men to go into their meeting, uh, one town resident walked past me and uh, basically just said, Oh, hi, Dave, <laughs> like he already was a viewer, maybe. Uh, and uh, uh, he told me that there's a problem with uh, people not being allowed to swim in this public lake over here unless they own property. You're not, you know, supposedly, he says, under state law, you know, it belongs to the state or whatnot, and you're supposed to be able to swim in it even if you're not rich and a property owner. So he's been fighting that, and uh, my intent is to ask Selectman about that. This edition of the Ridley Report. Okay, so I'm standing here with who am I standing here with? Centurion. 
<laughs> what's your, do, you, do you have a real name that you give JP, out? JP. Okay, JP. Yeah. Uh, should I just call you JP from Keene? Or yep, JP from, from Keene. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and you have uh, an interesting idea for uh, weighing in on the side of the Robin Hooders. Tell me what that is. Um, I filed a motion to intervene and to be added to the uh, Robin Hood case. So you want to be charged, sort of? I, I want to be added to the lawsuit, yes, as a defendant, yeah. And what will that, how will that benefit you to be on the, in the government's crosshairs? Well, I, it benefits me um, because I want to cross-examine and use the Constitution because I know the Constitution extremely well, and I want to cross-examine on why they kept Pete Pete Air from coplock.org on the case. And I'm doing it specifically because of Pete's case because I've been Robin Hooded more, more than Pete has. And P Pete's never been Robin Hood. He picked up the radio twice, and their argument is well, the conspiracy is he used, two, he used the radio twice, and under oath, it, you know, they kept him on and denied his request to be removed from the case. So, in retrospect, I guess if I get added, you know, they can back up that argument because under under the conspiracy heading that they're trying to use against Robin Hood and trying to bring, you know, the free all free keeners involved in that mix. But if they deny me, they must let Pete go under that same denial, under their argument of the denial. Right. So, you're, you're saying that your level of involvement is about the same as Pete's. More. My level of involvement was more because I've actually been Robin Hooded. I, I you know, I, I never put any things in the vid you know in, in the uh the meters but i followed them around you know i got videotape of them i've actually conversed with you know the uh the parking enforcement ladies more than once and you know at the same time i was cop locking at the same time so you know you know it kind of benefited my my cause because i'm not a free state i'm i'm strictly cop org but well, yeah, and that's one thing that's interesting with you is that I, I've never even gotten the impression that you were a libertarian. You know, we met before, and you're you're in favor of certain military interventions and so forth. So you're not even necessarily thinking like us, but you still, I guess, have some concerns about the authorities. I, I absolutely have a, a problem with authority, and it basically goes around the eighth article of the New Hampshire State Constitution. I believe public officials are abusing the public and going after them, um, like the Robin Hood, is irritates the living daylights out of me. Something needs to be done. Well, and, and you know they don't follow the Constitution, though, right? Oh, I, I do. I, I know. I know. I mean, just just the lawsuit against Robin Hood of Keene violates three constitutional rights right there, press, speech, and expression. So all three are being violated just in that alone. But to hear John, you know, John Meyer ended up being their, uh, their defense counsel was extremely great. But Pete, if I get at it, I'm going to be representing myself because I personally want to cross-examine them. And, and find out, you know, what they think of this 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 conspiracy that's going on against the city of Keene, and, and it's re it's absolutely ridiculous. And I think anybody that went Robin Hood, it should actually file a motion to intervene. You know, not necessarily anybody when the authorities come after you for being a Robin Hooder. You mean? Yes, yes, because the, their argument, their motion to object to Pete being removed, was it's got to be a conspiracy because he used the radio twice to say, oh. Here is a lady from bargain enforcement, or here's a guy from law. Here's, here's Alan Givitz or whatever driving down, you know, waving to me. So he's out. He's over here near the post office. Driving in circles around Central Keene, I hurl both insults, angry and mean, against the activists from Free Keene. Uh, who wander around thinking as though they were free and even though they aren't hurting me I will hate them hatefully urging their appearance in the penitentiary although that expense would be charged to me I'm starting to feel Somewhat confusedly. This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by... This edition of the Ridley Report... Mm. Get the hell out of here! An authoritarian academic. Providing great material for a liberty-leaning YouTuber. 
There are quite a few videos out there already that document very serious things happening and deadly police abuses. But these funny, angry people vids are really important. I'm fighting for the teacher. I work for the VA administration. I take care of my family. They illustrate a concept I call, I mean, you're familiar with the tragedy of the commons where all kinds of bad things happen on public property. But I call it the comedy of the commons. With regard to the term thug, uh, are you closer to being a thug than Daryl is in the sense that you've, you, uh, you've passed you know, a lot of laws that restrict people's freedoms? I have, I have three words to say to you, Mr. Ridley. Get a life. Okay. Working on it. Or at least I'd say it's uh, the other side of the same coin. You could also call it the Star Wars factor, or the serenity factor, where uh, sort of serious stories are told, but there's a lot of good dialogue and humor as part of the story. Another example of the comedy of the commons is uh, this situation where the government of Vermont uh, you know, it had all this money in its budget to buy signs, you know, or rent signs about clicking, you know, uh, clicking your seatbelt. Then they discovered that there was some kind of statutory pro prohibition on them, you know, some sort of statutory prohibition that prevented them from buying the pro seatbelt billboards in Vermont. So they bought pro billboard Bump, uh, pro, you know, pro uh, seatbelt billboards in New Hampshire and put them up in New Hampshire just so they could spend the money. And this, of course, was considered hilarious and it turned them into, uh, you know, the butt of many jokes and they were sort of a, uh, the laughing stock of New England for a couple of months. See, not every liberty fight has to be about keeping people out of concentration camps or yelling at the police. There is a, a parallel liberty struggle that is all, all about the humor. Now, when I don't have people acting crazily funny in front of me, I have to kind of try and do a little bit of it myself. And I get criticized for it because some people don't think I'm funny. But other people do. And for some reason, people keep watching. The ratings keep going up. I'm up to 20,000 hits a day now on my vids. Oh, and look. Get away from me, Bridley. People who I've never met even know who I am. As they're being authoritarian and funny at the same time in front of my camera. I didn't even have to risk an increased heart rate for this one. The point is, although documenting government abuses is very important, Giving them a chance to be laughing stocks is also important. I can't be on a public street. No, this, well, this is blocked off the street right now. Sidewalk. Sir, you can't be up here right now. Are you going to try and get me arrested for staying on the sidewalk? Oh, you're one of those Ron Paul, like, oh, yeah, everything, first and fourth amendment. We're asking you politely, can you please you make a scene about... I think I should be able to be up here. I'm, or are, you, why are you saying I'm not press? Technically, that's not a government person, but more what I'd call a government groupie. The point is, when bad guys get angry, they don't always get deadly. Sometimes they just get funny. Sun Tzu said, uh, Sun Tzu said, quote, If your opponent is of choleric temper, seek to irritate him. Unquote. No, can't do that. Federal agents on the streets of Keene, New Hampshire. For the best liberty-oriented talk 24-7. Kitchen thing here or something? Is that the kitchen? It's well, there in New Hampshire's North Korea. Yeah, yeah, like like the, uh, you know, the, um, the smoke detector thing at the CAC or whatever. I think that's totally wrong. They shouldn't be doing that. The, and, and militarizing themselves and gearing themselves up. I mean, Sergeant Short drives around. He's a sergeant now. Um, 
Jason Short from the King PD has an M4 rate unlocked, ready to ready to go, right in on in front of his cruiser. So, you know, it's like uh, where does yeah, it end? As long as I can have one. Where where does it end? <laughs> yeah, where does it yeah. end? You know, the 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 public needs to gain their jurisdiction back. They need to be more powerful than the government officials, and it's turning. The government officials have more. Well, they think they I have. Mean, more I, I don't know. I don't so much care about them having this stuff. It's the way they fund it. The way they take the money from us to have their weapon. The phone, and I can't. I can't take money from them to have a weapon. All calling us domestic terrorists. All calling activists domestic terrorists. That's. They, they're lucky they don't get you know fifty people on a class action lawsuit against just that phrase alone. We'll give it time. But but yeah, we, one of the things that's interesting about you is and you you you, you, pers- you personify New Hampshire in many ways because uh, you, that that is it is more normal for a, like if you're gonna going to hear some kind of violent joke or something like it's more normal to come from a from an average person or from a person who's lived in New Hampshire for a long time than one of us very scared people that has fled here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, that, and that's one thing about being banned. Banned from the CAC. I had I conversed with some people online, going back and forth. Some of them were for it, some of them were against it. But I said, you know, this Rich Paul thing got you guys paranoid as heck, because I heard some say, oh, I was an undercover cop. Oh, he's an informant. Oh, he he's part of this group, uh, Free Keen from Free Status group. Boy, oh, he's an, you know. And, and I've heard these, you know, offset things. And I'm like, listen, I, I am me. I have no masters, no slaves. I am, I am who I am. If, if CAC has rules about, you know, not being violent or violent rhetoric, that that's, you know, I will honor that because it's your place. It's not mine. I was there just to, you know, conversing with Pete and some people that I have business with. You know, yeah. other than that, I wasn't there to hang out, I, and I'm. Well, not. see, that's the thing. I mean, if you take, if you went back 20 years in time or 10 years in time, I would not have thought twice about making a joke of that kind. Yeah. Now I have to be very careful about what I say because it's all very real, you know. Yeah. So well, I think it's with with average New Hampshireites, or or at least people who haven't, you know, fled here for some reason. Um, it's just it, it, they're just talking like normal people. Well, there's in a, a way. difference. There's a difference between kidding around about violence and talking about violence with intent. It's two different things. Yep. And if you know me and heard the whole you know, statement, you know that I'm taking the city of Keene to court instead of driving a truck through the front door. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, I wouldn't be taking them to court. If I didn't do things in peaceful means, yeah. I wouldn't be taking them to court. Yeah. So I think actions speak louder than what people's rhetoric is. And, and, and rhetoric is subjective, I think. You can come to any conclusion you want and come to fi- five different different you know, oppositions about someone saying, oh, they're going to drive a truck through all your band or whatever. I honor it. I understand why they're freaked out because, you know, the FBI wanted to wear a wire in there. Yeah. So I understand their, their, their concern. I understand that. Now, well, did, I'm not going to change who I am because yeah. I got banned from the You don't have to go to the CAC. I don't have to go to the CAC. Uh, you know, <laughs> I go when I do. I don't think it's that important. But, but, but uh, I, like uh, I do have a question. Things. Would you ident- Ideologically, how would you identify yourself? A uh, uh, constitutionalist. Okay, that's what I figured. Yeah. All right. Yeah, a, a diehard uh, constitutionalist. Not but not, not, a, not a conservative? Again. I'm not a conservative because I don't believe in either one anymore. I see. Okay. I think I lost faith in, you know, the Democrat side and I lost faith in the Republican side. The whole process is just dirty. Uh, Taklidi, Taklidi America. You, you still consider yourself pro-war, though? Um, I'm not pro-war. I'm, pro, I'm pro-veteran. I see. Okay. I think they should be taken care of. As far as the war goes, I'm with Ron Paul. We have no money to go. Oh, okay. So your, your position is your position has changed since you were holding that sign. No, a year no. Ago. The sign the sign was stating that we we should stay because of um, per- personally for the veterans that actually fought for something there already for years and they believe in what they were doing. Let them finish what they started because I we see. shouldn't be jumping into something we didn't start. But as far as us going, we shouldn't have went to begin with. I see. But if you're gonna start something, finish it. Yeah. Um, as far as Iraq goes, that was false pretenses. I'm I'm with everybody on that. You know, that it was a lie. It was a bold faced lie. We went there for you know personal agendas or, or you know to make certain statements, whatever. And a bunch of people got killed over it. But as far as you know, posting up how many soldiers die all the time. I needed to let people know how many Iraqis died and how many Afghans died. That's the sign. I had the yeah. number of all the deaths, you know, yeah. something like 550,000. It's out of control. You know, it's yeah. out of control. Shire Society. You're actually an interesting person to ask this question to that I can't really ask myself or the free keeners because none of us are objective at all. But, but I can ask you because uh, you're a little bit more, you're more of a native or closer to being a native than we are. Yeah. 
is that? Free Keen from the Free Staters. What does that mean? Awesome. Get you Fair. morons out of here. I get the impression that there's quite a bit of opposition to Free Keen uh, and Free Staters in the town. Uh, but I'm, I sometimes can't tell if it's it's just because they're loud or, or what, what do you think is the pulse in the town? What would you think of an opinion poll was taken? You know, do you support Free Keen or do you approve of Free Keen? What would, what would the result be in the poll? Well, in I'm, Keen? A, I'm objective in many ways because if I was a parking enforcement person, I'd be irritated by them following me around. But I also know the law and I know I also know their rights, so I wouldn't have nothing to do with it and be like, Well, I have to grin and bear it because that's the law, they're allowed to do that. You know, this is what I vowed to be and, and even in their even in their job description it says they they're subjective to public scrutiny and, and people aren't gonna like them very much, so it's part of their job description. But but your friends and people you know and what kind of sense do you get from them is how they're reacting to these activists? My wife hates the idea of them being followed. The large man is saying he's going to smash the camera. Just wanted to inform you guys. Don't talk to us. Just get well, away from us. Well, it says in your it says in your employment protocol when someone's making criminal threats, you're supposed to assist okay, the public. Stop, stop, stop. You literally got three minutes. You really not have a life, bro? You get a hundred minutes away from these girls. Leave him alone. Um, in fact, I know some people that actually have assaulted, you know, Graham Colson, you know, went after him physically on following, even though I think there's some shady issue going on there. But as far as myself go, I, I, I personally got banned from the CAC from violent rhetoric recently, this is a couple weeks ago, um, because I made a statement about driving the beer cat through a front of a, you know, police station instead of taking him to court. It's so I'd interesting. I'd him to court. It was just a joke. Um, but but I got I got banned from the CAC because of that. But I still love what they do. I, I love their activism. I, I love people actually taking a cause, even though it might not be the right cause or the right way. But if it gets attention, if it gets attention and people following it, I think it might be a good idea for more people to be doing it. Garrett Garrett yourself, you know, uh, probably two of my favorite activists. Um, Ian, Ian being the third, um, even though I haven't seen him do much lately because he's been doing the free talk live and stuff like that. He's better um, at that. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, he's he's good at the, the talk. He's not very good at confrontations. Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah. you know, I, I like Ian a lot, and I, you know, I, I personally have friends. Pete's a friend of mine, and I got into CopBlock.org because of him and my personal experience with Keen PD. Well, and it's interesting um, how I've, inter I've seen you interact with police. Uh, What'd you like to do? He's gonna open this up. All right, I'll document the process, but won't object. Oh, hey. <laughs> Hi. We all have jobs to do. It's yep. funny, I know both of them, but they don't know each other. <laughs> you, who else do you know? No, he's uh, saying that he knows, he knows you and he knows me. Oh, I see, yeah. Awesome. It's a funny feeling, I know, running into people that you, you recognize there from television. You know where I can hold the sign? Yeah, just up on the sidewalk. Yeah. You're very respectful toward them. I like your demeanor. It's very much better than most of the free states. Well, a lot of the free staters, they go up to cops too. Yeah, I just, you know, the, the day I met you, I just thought it was weird that I'm in camo gear. And they asked you for your ID, but didn't even go near me. I thought, it was, and I'm, wa I'm waving a sign saying pro-war or whatever. And, you know, I thought that was kind of a, you know, a conflict of interest on their part. You know, I look like some terrorist and... Here you are wearing a press badge and everything. They still ask you who you. Well, are. when the aliens come or the Chinese invade, I guess I'll be pro-war too. <laughs> yeah, I had to stick out for you and say something. It just wasn't yeah. right. I, I didn't feel like it was right. I'm like, hey, I know this guy. This guy's well known. You know, yeah. Le leave him alone. But uh, you know, the Robin Hood thing. I, I, I'm doing it for Pete more than anything because I really don't believe he should be added to the case at all just by using the. It's arbitrary. It, it they don't like his beard. Yeah, they don't like his beard, or, or you know, they have a personal gripe against him because he's taped so many, you know, cops. And, and the thing with City of Keene is they're extremely, extremely retaliatory in action when it comes to, like, if you file complaints or go to the AG's office. You know, when they hear about it, they're going to try to get you in any way they can, like this. Well, there in New Hampshire's North Korea. Yeah, yeah. So what else happened in Keene <laughs> this week? Something about parking meters being doubled? The fees? What the fuck? What's wrong with these people? Uh, you need to ask Mr. Big Hair, 
and Mr. Robin Hood about that. <laughs> Mr. Big Hair. Because they were the ones it's all their fault. that went to the meeting and the hearing. All I know is that some no, fart, fart. wants to increase the parking rate to where instead of getting half an hour for 25 cents, you get 20 minutes for 25 cents. So it's not exactly doubled. They should do it. But the fines, the, are, the the fines, fines will be doubled. They should do it. Mm-hmm. There will be now a, if, if this actually does go through, a 25 cent minimum because 20 minutes is not divisible by any of the do- denominations of currency mm-hmm. below a quarter. Gotcha. So we can't give you half a minute. We can't give you five and a half minutes for this amount of change. Well, I don't think their meters work that way. I don't. I don't. I think you're absolutely right. They probably are not programmable. That's why they did it this way. I thought they were just rounding up. No, no. That's why they did it this way. Is so that they can't divide. Because if you want to do it divisible, all right, twenty-five cents gives you twenty-five minutes, and then it's basically a penny a minute. Get those nerds! So, yeah, they, they want to increase the... Wait, were you calling me a nerd because I do math? <laughs> you do math on the show. What the hell? I'm it, trying to raise the IQ by like a point no, and a half. And Nuri lost me. We, we don't need all that. Uh, so the, the entire article is... and the There's a Sentinel article, there's a Free Keen article, and there's the video, and I think at least four activists spoke at this particular event. I wasn't able to go. I work nights. But it's all at thefreekeen.com, and you'll be hearing more of this. I think they're, I don't think this is going to go anywhere. I don't think it's going to be, uh, I don't think they're going to go with this. I think there are enough people on city council who are against it. I know that there's some on the city council that are for it. I think there are enough citizens who are just upset already with parking, and they, the last thing they want is let it go up even further. Uh, I, the bottom line is, this is just one other thing that government does. They need to let, they need to let loose. They need to they need to sell those parking spots to those uh, businesses and to those property owners and let them maintain their own parking spaces. Just like guess what? Just like I maintain my own parking spot. Just like Walmart maintains their own parking spot. Just like Colony Mill maintains their entire parking spot. Why do the businesses on Main Street get a free ride? See here you go. Here's Main Street business welfare. That's what all it. That's what government is at the end of the day. It's just more Fart. welfare for whoever has the most lobbyists and the most votes. But it's not even welfare because the businesses are paying a fee to the city for the spots. Yeah, I think they're. When you consider that they're spending well, almost like three million on parking out of the budget, they're probably making out like champs. They are probably paying a fee and they're probably making out. It's definitely subsidized. Of course, if you consider, if you had to pay for your own snow removal and your own guy picking uh, cigarette butts out of the grass, well, that doesn't cost much. That's a $5 an hour job for Graham or whoever. I, he, I bet he would love a job like that. That's not a fair wage. Yeah, well. Uh, I, I'm going to hold my tongue on that, but. I know it probably wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't go down because you got to wake up in the morning to go do jobs like that and, you know. Before the, because you don't want to see the riffraff out there in the grass picking cigarette butts when you have all your tourists, your keen tourists. Yeah. Uh, visiting, well, you know, visiting you could just town. do what you do with the rest of the riffraff, and you put a government uniform and a badge on them, and suddenly they're no longer riffraff, and you can just, you know, what they had to do? They had to have the riffraff dress up in costumes and put on badges, and then stand by each uh, meter, and then every time somebody's late to pay the meter, they just wait till they come back to their car. And-